Let's talk to Neil Dixon, who's Chief Executive of the NHS Confederation. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. I mean, this is, this is something I think a lot of people are hoping for. There are a lot of people wondering how it could be police, talking of the police just now. But the idea is that the, the tough new local lockdowns could rapid, rapidly isolate new coronavirus sufferers um, if, uh, if we do see a, a new sort of a spate of uh, cases in, either in a particular workplace, on a housing estate, in a town, or, or, or a particular region. You could lock down a whole town if there was a regional flare-up. You could lock down a school or business or anything uh, if there was that. But, of course, you need the contact tracing system system in place. The Prime Minister has pledged it to be in place by June the 1st, that's next Monday. Um, can, can we move out of a national lockdown without that in place, fully working? Well, I think it would certainly have to be properly up and running. And of course, those words contain a whole lot of uh, possible caveats. Uh, certainly, my understanding is that although the Prime Minister has promised this will be up and running by June, I think he used the expression a world beating system or equivalent, is that the people working on this think it'll be up and running at the beginning of June. But they're absolutely clear that this is not, that it will not be fully up and running in the sense that everything will be working well, all bits of information will be flying around, everything will be in place. So I think that if we, instead of, again, over-promising, it will take a bit of time. Now, you'll remember we raised the issue about the absence of any evidence that they were really engaged in putting a local arm to this uh, three-legged stool. There's the app, there's the national bit, and then there's the local bit. We didn't see that third leg, and we felt that both local authorities and directors of public health were not properly engaged and involved. Now, since then, they have become very much involved, and there are plans uh, afoot to set up local means of contact tracing to support the national effort. The app has faded a little bit into the background and I think there's a recognition that some of the countries that have done very well in this actually haven't needed an app. So an app is, I think somebody described it as the sort of cherry on the cake, not the cake itself, and therefore we shouldn't be just talking about technology. This is old-fashioned contact tracing. Now, I think, I, to be honest, at this stage, I don't know how far those local plans have got. Obviously, we've got teams that are already trained. People do. There is contact tracing already set up on a routine basis in every part of the country. But stepping this up into this kind of scale that might be required, I think probably will take a bit of time. So I wouldn't expect us to have the data. I could be corrected on this. I wouldn't expect us to have the data, the systems, everything else super in place to be able to, uh, for example, decide you were going to shut down a, a, a town or, or a, something as large as that. You might have a team that would go in, for example, and close a factory or something like that, which would be obviously much uh, smaller and so on, and put in place the contact tracing to try and get those people who had been in contact or the employees and their families uh, to self-isolate in order to suppress what might be seen as a potential outbreak in a smaller institution. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I, there is that worry, isn't there? And there's been the talk about having regional differences and complaints from the First Minister of Scotland, Nicola Sturgeon, that you know, Scotland can't do things differently from England and then, of course, chose to do things differently. England and Wales and Scotland do have different rules when it comes to where you can drive to for your, act, uh, your, your daily exercise and the like right now. Um, but, uh, but there's a difference, isn't there, between sort of a whole region, whole towns, and you say a, a smaller area where perhaps people can be aware. Look, you can put signs up saying, hey, you know, there's been an outbreak. Can you stay in your homes? We, we're going to test everybody and we, we're going to see where the problem is and, and isolate people but again this is crucial for people not only just being able to get you know be identified everyone to get the test get the antigen test all the antibody tests to find out they're not at risk yeah. um, we hope but the antigen test and then get the results back quickly and this is the crucial thing we are seeing you know, you know tens of thousands of antigen tests are being tested whether you've got the virus right now but sometimes people aren't getting results back for you know five days well that's too long it is I agree. You have got to, the key point here is the speed with which, first of all, access to testing, making sure everybody can get the access. And this is, I'm talking about the antigen test. Having the access to that and then having the speed of response and then having the contact tracers 
uh, in place to be able to trace people down. And I think crucially also getting local support. That's the other, the other issue really around this, which is, and I think that's one of the reasons why they have recognised that it's so important to have a local system in place so that people understand that this is about suppressing the virus in a limited way in order to be able to try and snuff out any kind of re-emergence. And we will have to have a more more subtle approach going forward. But in answer to your original question, will that all be ready by Monday? I frankly would be surprised. Uh, I think these things do will take time. You could argue we're, you know, we're a little bit behind in trying to get this all running. They're trying to set up something pretty amazing, both at national and at, at local level. And I know there's a huge effort going on to, to try and get this into place as quickly as possible. But I think we may need to have a degree of patience. And across the country, at least at the moment, it doesn't look like, you know, there are lots of places with the R number, um, you know, ab- above one. And great news from Northern Ireland yesterday as well in terms of uh, suppressing so looking at hospital admissions looking at deaths that is optimistic for now but as as we start to release lockdown the worry is that that then causes the r number to, r number to rise so that looking across a, a larger area and then within smaller areas again having that intelligence in place and being able to stuff things out that's that's the key in going forward but i would expect it would be a few weeks before you know this machine is absolutely running smoothly um, and that itself will take a huge effort.